There has been only one viral outbreak that we've been able to eradicate completely in the history of our species, and that was smallpox. Its earliest vaccine was developed around 980, where the scabs of an infected person were rubbed into the scratch on the surface of the skin of a healthy person. The idea was that when scab from an infected person entered someone who was not infected with it, it would alert the person's immune system to fight and produce antibodies against it. This meant that when the smallpox virus did in fact get into someone with no traces of it, the body would already have developed a good warning system to alarm the immune system and fight it. This simple method helped bring down the fatality rate of smallpox from 30% to 2%. And 2% is exactly the fatality rate of the latest coronavirus outbreak, the novel COVID-19. This fatality rate of COVID-19 is 5 to 17 times smaller than the previous two coronavirus outbreaks that hit the human's heart, the SARS coronavirus in 2003 and the MERS coronavirus in 2012. This number on its own might give a false impression that we're dealing with something relatively less dangerous in COVID-19. In terms of the fatality rate, yes. In terms of the basic reproduction number, no. The basic reproduction number gives us a measure of how many healthy people one person affected with a virus is likely to transmit the virus to. In case of MERS coronavirus, this number was 0.3 to 0.8. When the basic reproduction number is less than 1, as was in the case of MERS, it meant that from 10 people with the virus, it was likely to get transmitted to only 3 to 8 people and these three to eight people in turn were likely to affect only one to four people and so on. But in the case of COVID-19, one infected person is likely to transmit it to two to seven people who are then likely to transmit it to a greater and greater number of people. This unprecedented rate of transmission is one of the reasons why even countries such as Italy and the United States of America and Australia etc. have been forced into a quarantine. So, what really are the odds of getting a vaccine for coronavirus? Well, getting a vaccine for any virus, no matter how innocuous it is, is a difficult prospect. This is because a virus changes its genetic configuration in the blink of an eye, in comparison to mutation observed in human beings. In human beings, a mutation can be seen in a matter of one generation, that is, after human beings bear offsprings who bear traces of mutations, and this takes a matter of a few decades. In the case of COVID-19, which hit us in November, it has already muted into S and L types in a matter of a couple of months. So while developing a vaccine, scientists need to make sure that the vaccine can handle such mutations or else the virus can change its makeup in such a way that it is practically immune to such vaccines. This is one of the reasons why we need to get a different flu shot each year. The flu virus changes its genetic makeup to counteract the shot so that after one year the virus is immune to it and therefore a new shot is to be taken which counteracts the changes made by the flu. But predicting such mutations is a difficult thing. This is because a virus is made up of either RNA or DNA, which are basic arrangements of a staggering number of molecules in a particular manner. As the arrangement of molecules of the RNA of coronavirus integrates with our own DNA and RNA, which has billions of possible combinations, this makes nailing these possibilities and predicting how a virus is likely to change its shape and that of our DNA or RNA is the most challenging prospects of all while creating a vaccine. A few medications have been tried to fight coronavirus a cocktail of lopinavir and ritonavir, which are used to lower HIV levels in our bloodstream, was served to a person in Thailand. 48 hours after its consumption, the COVID-19 infected person tested negative. Well, this was really an isolated case and certainly not the case of a vaccine. One of the methods that is currently being tried for the development of a vaccine is to make a dummy of the COVID-19 virus inside the body of human beings. This is done with the help of mRNA synthesized in the laboratory. Normally, mRNAs inside our bodies transmit the instructions contained within our DNA. 
but the synthesized mRNA is being programmed to get our body to produce certain coronavirus-like bodies. When such proteins develop inside our bodies, scientists hope that our immune system will recognize them as foreign bodies and learn how to fight them as antibodies. So when the real, instead of the laboratory-made doppelganger of coronavirus, does get inside our body, our immune system will have had enough of a response system to fight it off. Another strategy being used to produce a vaccine is maintaining the stability and configuration of spike protein of the coronavirus. The surface of the coronavirus has a lot of proteins, which gives it a crown-like structure, hence the name corona. Researchers are working on synthesizing amino acid sequences in laboratory such that when it is inserted into the spike protein of a coronavirus, they bind perfectly with each other. This produces a greater stabilization of the spike and may help our body provoke accurate immune response. But before such vaccines are tried in human beings, conventionally such tests are performed in laboratories in animals such as mice. But the COVID-19 doesn't seem to thrive in mice cells, making such tests difficult to run. Besides, another problem is the possibility that whatever short-term plans we take to mitigate its effects, the virus might evolve differently in other animals such as bats and might manifest itself as a different strain in some later time. Historically, creating vaccines for viruses has taken somewhere between half a decade to a few decades. But historically, we've never seen a virus take over the globe so quickly as the COVID-19. The positive side in all of this is that Never in our history have we had as many resources, scientifically or economically, to counteract a virus. So it will be interesting to see further developments in the making of the vaccine of coronavirus. The best estimates for now, at least, have it that middle of 2021 would be the earliest that a vaccine might be available.